Hi, I'm Kent. Looking at photos of different pots, I found that I've been drawn to speckled clays. Unfortunately, I don't have any speckled clay, nor do I have any speckled slip, which is how I make my pots. I know you can get speckled slip, however, you're limited to what the manufacturer provides, or these days what the supplier can actually give you. So I went looking online on how you can actually make a clay that's speckled or make a slip that's speckled. I found a few different materials that can be added to the slip that should create a speckled effect. In this video, I'm gonna test these two different ingredients in my slip. So this one, ilmenite, from what I can tell, will create small black speckles in the final clay body. It doesn't melt at cone 5-6 where I'm firing. And from what I understand, this rutile will melt slightly, and so it'll spread out a little bit and form brown speckles. So I'm going to do these one by one. I'm going to start with the ilmenite, and then we will go ahead and try the rutile. So before I jump in, I'm going to show you my plan for mixing up the slip and my test tiles. All right, let's walk through this. This is my mold I made for my test tiles. Previously, I measured it, and it takes about 100 grams of wet slip. So it's 100 grams. My slip is about 30% by weight water, so that means there's 70 grams of clay in here. My test tiles actually wind up smaller because I turned them up, but I need to be able to slip cast that much. All right, so I want to make four different test tiles with different percentages. I've seen recommendations all over the map in terms of how much. I've seen from like a third of a percent all the way up to 10%. 10% seems crazy much to me. So I'm guessing that it's gonna be on the lower end. I really don't know, so I'm gonna try it out. So in this set of tests, I'm gonna do 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0.75%. So 0.25% of 70 grams is 0 0.75 grams. So if I wanted a test tile with 0.25% of my material added in, I would need to add in 0 0.175 grams. So I don't want to test just one percentage, I want to actually want to test four. So I'm going to test 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and 1% even. And so I'm going to do that across four different test tiles. So to start with, I'm going to mix up a batch of slip that is enough for four test tiles, but only at 0.025%. So I'll have 400 grams of slip, and I will then have for the four test tiles, 0.175 grams each, so that's 0 0.7 grams total. I will then slip cast one of my test tiles. After that, I'll be left with 300 grams of slip, and I want to bring the whole quantity up to 0.5%. So I'll need to add three units of 0.175, one, two, three, and that will get me to 525. So I'll need to add another 525 grams. I'll slip cast that. Then I'll have 200 grams left. I'll need to add another 0.175 for the two that are left. And then finally I'll have 100 grams left and I'll have, I need to add 0.175. So my first test tile will have the 0.175 grams. My second textile will have two units of that to get to 0.5%. So it'll have the 0.35 grams. The third textile will have 0.525 and the last one have 0.7. You'll notice these numbers are the same. It's because I'm doing four different textiles with four different percentages. I could potentially vary this and the numbers would be different. That's just how it worked out this time. So first up, I need 400 grams of slip and then I'll need 0.7 grams of my additive. I have a clean solo cup I'm going to use and my high precision scale. And a freshly mixed up batch of slip. So I'm gonna to get to 400 grams.
This probably doesn't need to be so precise. I'm going to lose some as I cast the test tiles. But we're going to start out as good as I can get. So going back to my paper, for my first batch, I need 0 0.7 grams. And I've got my respirator. I'm going to measure this out. That seemed like a super tiny amount. All right, I got my first mold here. Let's put it together. And this weighs too much for my other scale. So we'll use this one here. It goes up higher. Put this another mix. And we want 100 grams, so it should be just about full. Ninety seven, close enough. All right, I'll set this to the side. And I have a second mold that I made. So we just did the first row and I poured that one. So now I have 300 grams left and I add, need to add three units in. So 0.525 more. So this one is the 0.25% and this one is the 0.5%. I only have these two molds, so I'm gonna go ahead and cycle these through, pop them out, and then we will do the next two. Here are the four test tiles from 0.25% to 1%. These have been drying for a little while and I've cleaned them up a bit. At this point, they don't look any different, so I'm gonna make sure to keep all of these straight. Okay, I finished up all the Illuminate and now I'm gonna move over to Rutil and do the same thing for those. To do four test tiles, I need 400 grams of slip. I just mixed up my slip here. All right, 397, I think that's close enough. All right, so now I pulled out my high precision scale. And I would bring this 400 grams of slip up to a quarter of a percent. So basically I'll have a quarter percent per test tile to start with, that's 0.7 grams. All right, that was 0.73, but it should be good enough. All right, got my mold. All right, we want 100 grams of slip. I don't have any more molds right now, but I can go ahead and mix up the next batch. So I need to get the third test tile up to 0.525. I already have 0.35 in it, so I need to add for these other two another 0.35.
All right, and now 100 grams of the 0.75%. And then finally, for my last test style, I need another 0.175. That will get it up to 0.7, which is 1%. And we should have just about 100 grams left. All right, I probably have a few more grams left in there, but I think that's close enough. All right, and here are all the test dials. Here are the first four that I did, the 0.25 to 1% of ilmenite. And the rutile, likewise, 0.25 to 1%. This one I can kind of sort of see a little bit um, of the speckles, I believe, that's in the clay although it's really faint. So it's quite possible that I have way too little in here and I might need to go back and retest these with higher percentages. But I also know that things look very different in their unfired state. So what I'm gonna do is actually go ahead and do a final firing on these all the way up to cone six. I'm not gonna glaze these, I'm just gonna test the raw clay bodies. Once I get a percentage of speckles that I kind of like, then I can start testing how they will interact with the glazes. So that will take me a little while to actually do the firing, but through movie magic, you guys will see that in just a second. Here are the results of all the tests. These all fire just fine to cone six. So these are lined up in the order that I made them. So this is the ilmenite from 0.25 to 1% and the rutile from 0.25 to 1% as well. And this one here was supposed to melt a little and create brown specks. These look maybe brown and I don't think that they melted very much. And just for comparison, here is a piece of fired raw clay that's the right color. So you can see that all of them, they definitely do have a speckled effect relative to just the bare clay. So I mentioned earlier, I wasn't sure how much to add, and it definitely seems the 0.25% are definitely on the low end. And even the 1% could probably use a bit more. One other thing not directly related to the speckles was my test tiles. Those actually worked out really, really well. So it was nice to be able to mix up small batches of slip and test them out. So in a future video, I'll probably do another test with even higher percentages. I'll probably start with the 1% here and go up even higher and see if I can get a more pronounced speckled effect. I'll also probably look around and see if there's any other mix-ins that I want to add to my slip to see if I can get different effects out of my clay body. And as always, if you guys have any ideas on things to add to your clay or in your slip in particular to make it more interesting, I would love to hear from you. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Thanks.